In this video, we will discuss about C4 cycle. C4 cycle occurs during photosynthesis in plants. Plants which have C4 cycle, they are also called as C4 plants. This was discovered by scientist Hatchlack, Hatchlack Kortschek. So it is called as Hatchlack pathway or HSK pathway. Now this cycle is called as C4 cycle because the first stable product which is being produced during fixation of the carbon dioxide that is made up of four carbons. So this is called as C4 cycle. And plants which are having this cycle they are called as C4 plants. C4 plants are also characterized by anatomical feature and this is called as Kranz anatomy. C4 plants will have C3 cycle as well as C4 cycle but fixation of carbon dioxide will be different in both the cycles. Now initial, initial fixation of carbon dioxide will occur in the mesophyll cell with the help of enzyme phosphoenol pyruvate carboxylase. Now we will discuss what is Kranz anatomy. Kranz mean wreath or ring or ring like arrangement. This is found in C4 plant. Now this is epidermal tissue which is uh, present in the leaves. If we take a leaf and cut its section, outermost layer will be epidermis protected by a cuticle. Then this is the mesophyll tissue which is tightly arranged and this is the vascular tissue and this vascular tissue is surrounded by a sheath called as bundle sheet. Now we can see here mesophyll cells also have chloroplast and bundle sheath also have chloroplast but their size is different. Uh, bundle sheath chloroplast they are bigger than the mesophyll chloroplast even their structure is different. So uh, this bundle sheath having chloroplast, this is again a different feature. Now, If we see the uh, structure of bundle sheath chloroplast, they are bigger in size. They do not have any grana formation, they have thylakoids and reserve food material is in the form of starch and they are quite bigger in size. If we see the mesophyll chloroplast, they have grana formation. Now these are grana and this is the matrix of the chloroplast and this is double membrane involved. Uh, to see the detailed structure of mesophyll chloroplast, I have shared a video and uh, link is shared also, you can watch that video. So uh, this is the difference between chloroplast of bundle sheath and mesophyll, bigger in size, no grana formation, more of the starch grain is stored and here only cyclic photophosphorylation will take place and here cyclic as, as well as non-cyclic photophosphorylation. Now what is photophosphorylation? Basically it is the synthesis of ATP. When ADP and inorganic phosphate they combine in presence of light this is called as photophosphorylation. When this occurs in a cyclic manner this is called as cyclic photophosphorylation and this occurs in a non-cyclic manner this is called as non-cyclic photophosphorylation and these cells now this is the mesophyll cell and this is the bundle sheet cells they are connected by each other by connections called as plasmodesmetal connection. So these are plasmodesmetal connection. Now C4 plants they belong to following families like they belong to Graminae, Cypressae, Chenopodiaceae, Amaranthaceae, Compositae, Euphorbiaceae, Portulaceae and Nyctogenaceae. In Graminae members are maize, sugarcane, panicum and panicetum. We can see here this is the sugarcane. And this is the corn or the maize plant which is showing C4 cycle. Now what is C4 cycle and how this is occurring? Uh, as we have discussed Kranz anatomy, we have seen that first fixation of carbon dioxide will occur in the mesophyll cell, then this will occur in the bundle sheath. So this, uh, these two th that is mesophyll and bundle sheath, they are connected with each other. So for explaining C4 cycle, we have made this, we can see here, we can ma made like this. So this is the mesophyll and this is the bundle sheet. They are connected by connections through which continuation is maintained. So first we'll discuss fixation of carbon dioxide in the mesophyll cells. Now first fixation of carbon dioxide will take place by phosphoenol pyruvate also called as PEP. So this will accept carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide will be taken from the atmosphere. With the help of water this can form carbonic acid and enzyme which is involved is called as PEP carboxylase enzyme. So this will help in fixation of carbon dioxide. So PEP will accept this carbon dioxide and will get converted to oxaloacetic acid. Now this oxaloacetic acid will accept two hydrogens from uh, NADPH2 and this will lose two hydrogens and they will be accepted by this oxaloacetic acid. And with the help of enzyme malate dehydrogenase, this will be reduced to malic acid. Sometime this oxaloacetic acid may get amino group and this will get converted to uh, amino acid called as aspartic, aspartate or aspartic acid. Now if malic acid is produced this will get transported to the bundle sheet. If 
aspartate is produced aspartate can get can get transported to the bundle sheets so malic acid has been transported here now this malic acid will get converted to pyruvate and carbon dioxide right so this losing of carbon dioxide is also called as decarboxylation so this has been converted to pyruvate and carbon dioxide now this carbon dioxide will enter into the c3 cycle this will discuss just now now this pyruvate which is being liberated from malic acid here now this pyruvate can accept amino group and can get converted to an amino acid called as alanine right another thing is this aspartic acid which has been transported now this will first get converted to oxaloacetic acid now this oxaloacetic acid can again lose carbon dioxide this is decarboxylation and this can also form pep and this pep can get transported back to the uh, mesophyll chloroplast or this pyruvate which has been produced which has been converted to alanine alanine can also get transported back to the uh, mesophyll chloroplast aspartic acid when losing amino group this is called as deamination when something some organic acid is accepting amino group this is called as transamination now here we can see here when malic acid is getting converted to pyruvate now nadp is getting converted to nadh2 and this is again uh, losing two hydrogens and getting back converted to pyruvate so either way this carbon dioxide which has been a result of decarboxylation now this will be taken by c3 cycle which is operative in the bundle sheath chloroplast like we have seen bundle sheath chloroplast they are bigger in size and their acceptor of carbon dioxide is ribulose 1 5 biphosphate now in the presence of enzyme rubisco ribulose 1 5 biphosphate carboxylase this will accept carbon dioxide and this will enter into the c3 cycle or the calvin cycle calvin cycle we have discussed in the previous video link is shared in the description box i will not go into the detail of the c3 cycle so c3 cycle is operative here in the bundle sheath chloroplast now these molecules they have been transported back to the mesophyll chloroplast alanine as well as pep now pep will directly enter into again c4 cycle right now this alanine when it is losing amino group this may get converted to pyruvate now this pyruvate can again get converted to phosphoenol pyruvate for this we need to have atp which is which is losing two phosphorus acids and inorganic phosphates which are accepted by uh, pyruvate to form phosphoenol pyruvate and itself this is getting converted to amp and this amino group which is being liberated now this can be again accepted by oxaloacetic acid and this can get converted to aspartic acid so phosphoenol pyruvate has been uh, regenerated directly or this can be from the pyruvate by phosphopyruvic dikinase enzyme so this is forming phosphoenol pyruvate so this is c4 cycle so first stable product is malic acid which is c4 in length so this is called as c4 cycle so here fixation of carbon dioxide is separated by space now this c4 fixation is occurring in the mesophyll chloroplast and c3 cycle is operative in the bundle sheath chloroplast so we can say carbon dioxide fixation is separated by space now c4 plants they require extra atps that is 5 atps and 2 nadh2 for uh, one mole of carbon dioxide assimilation while c3 plants they require 3 atp and 2 nadph2 this extra atp is supplied by cyclic photophosphorylation which which is occurring in the thylakoids of the bundle sheath chloroplast because they don't have grana so they will be showing cyclic photophosphorylation and that extra atp is supplied for this reaction uh, what is the significance of the c4 plant or importance of the c4 plant now c4 plants they have a highly efficient enzyme pep carboxylase which require very low concentration of carbon dioxide but it needs high intensity of light because it has a high atp requirement so this need to have uh, more atp through cyclic photophosphorylation so this will have more light intense light c4 plants because there is geometric arrangement of the tissue around the vascular bundle so they can grow in the water stress condition or they can grow around the vascular tissue to get more water so they have a geometric arrangement of the tissue they can also grow in the saline condition where salts are there because organic acids which are being produced malic acid oxaloacetic acid they can get converted to anions and this can also occur in high temperature as well as under water stress condition or water scarcity condition because they don't need much of the water so uh, c4 plants they have higher rate of photosynthesis as compared to c3 plant under 
uh, water stress condition or under high light intensity or under uh, in presence of salts but c3 plants they require optimum requirement for the photosynthetic process so c4 plants will both will have both the cycle c3 as well as c4 cycle uh, so this is all about c4 cycle if you have any questions you can ask me in the comment box thank you for watching my video if you like my video please like share and subscribe